skipping. Hey, man. Wanted to tell you what a good time I've been having. You know what a good time is? Reading the 400-page PDF of Stranger in a Strange Land off my smartphone. Uh, not all of us get to listen to the sci-fi classics uh, on the audio version, George. And, um, you know, it wasn't my fault that the stereo got stolen out of my car or that I can't afford new earbuds, man. So um, one tiny word at a time, I'm trudging my way through that classic sci-fi you wanted me to read, since it's the only thing you're reading, if you're not actually reading it. Um, riveting is not a word I would use, and um, I think the story's a boring piece of shit. Goodbye. I'm George. Kevin. Welcome to Busy Daddy's Do Sci-Fi Podcast. Mmm. Mmm. Big episode oh, that, tonight. That flavor doesn't have any flavor. No flavor? No flavor in that Vic, seltzer. Jesus he gives Vic. us, what was it, Badusi Blackberry last week? I'm going to text uh, him real quick. Mm-hmm. Nick. Hey, ask him if he finally got that theme song. The new theme song. Nick. That, word on the theme song. No flavor. He promised us on. this. This funky theme that's song that is supposed to be a lot better than that, uh, what, Seinfeld-esque intro. What did he call it, the last intro? This is before mm. he starts producing mm-hmm. it, of course. So I called it, He called it a pile of horse shit, mm-hmm. is what he called it. He's Some got a way. sort of... He's got a way about him. That's proto, what, post-punk kind of thing. He was saying... I, he can, that dude talks out of his ass a lot. He does. He yeah. just got a text back from him. I mean, well... I said he's listening... He said more sexy. More sexy? Yeah. I don't know. I thought the sex episode was the last one, Vic. With all the sex in space. That might explain the blandness of the seltzer. He needs us to overcompensate. It's, uh, yeah. Too much flavor. We got blackberry before. Now we get no flavor. So we got to bring the flavor. See? He did well, it you know again, what he did? Man. You know, you know he, he, he cut it. the flavor. Just like you would have cut some minutes out of that uh, poor Russian movie. That movie, oh, that he poor, ate, he, that dude, poor Russian. You know why? You know why that Russian, Russian made that? Master they filmmaker. eat the potato film after <laughs> the movie. So the whole idea they, back then is you're like, I must make a, a really long movie to feed the family. Well, <clears throat> maybe if you trimmed a little of that uh, potato film, then his kids wouldn't have starved to death. I'm really sorry if hey, his kids actually starved to death. Yeah, Stalingrad. Say what? Uh, what's your What's your boy going as for Halloween? He doesn't know yet. He's, He's mentioned. Jack. What's up with these kids? I don't fucking know. I, maybe it's because I have haven't brought him with their lives? to a store. <laughs> you brought him to a store. I've brought him to a store and just like gone, go. You know, because I feel like that's how we landed on Darth Vader last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, this year, his the best one that came out of him was Scarecrow. He wants to be a Scarecrow. Is that the classic? You should go with yeah, that. That's pretty good. Well, that's kind of the thing. You start letting they'll, they'll change their minds every week. You he kind said, of got to stick with them to make start playing a costume. He, he looked great as a scarecrow. He said scarecrow, and he came up to me and went, "And I want you to be a pumpkin, and mommy, do you want to be a witch?" And he had all our costumes, and it was it was this awesome little moment. And then later on, he, we were at dinner, and he goes, "I want to be Captain America for Halloween." No, you got a I scarecrow him scarecrow just for though. photographic charm. Yeah, he'd be a great scarecrow. Yeah, we'll see, listener. You'll know if this happens here. Um, check the Instagram. Never happened. I'm going as Chris Kelvin from Solaris. I'm gonna... <laughs> which one? <laughs> which one? They're both Kelvin. I'm going to go from the Russian one. I'm man, going, he I'm had going... better pillow hair the whole <laughs> he time. Had such beautiful yeah. hair, man. Yeah, he no, did. He man. had like this beautiful wave. He was not a very good looking man, though. 
Like, he, he, like I, he, he was no. a scientist, right? Yeah. But I mean, to get to go from that to then, no, dude, Clooney, dude, we can't do this, dude. The mail up. from the Solaris episode—it's really was, stacking up. We pissed yeah. a lot of people off. I know. One of them being Andre Tarkovsky's ghost. Yeah, Andre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Halloween, Andre, man. Andre Tarkovsky's ghost. Tarkovsky's pre- ghost. It's, it's October, man, and yeah, he came. There's a Dostoevsky novel in there, right there, man. The ghost Already. of Tar- Tarkovsky's coming to haunt us. Yeah. Make the but but Dostoevsky's ghost, of course, would have to write that. Mm. If you think about. Well, yeah. yeah, I got him on retainer. Well, not well, Vic, get, Vic what's the him. what was that? What was that time bending place from that shitty movie that we watched, the Polychron? <laughs> Oh, if you get in the Polychron, anyone uh, can write anything. That movie was named... In my head, I went... There's no way it was one of those movies named after the lead character, and it was. It was called Sen, mm-hmm. after the fucking lead character. In the which movie. got us into a whole Nell thing, which is how we lost the audience there for that people. Uh-huh. For the Helen Keller jokes. For the Helen Keller jokes. And then uh, last yeah. episode, we lost the um, Godard fans, the... <laughs> <laughs> the communist Chinese and, and our one Russian friend. And our one Russian friend. Yeah. Who did uh, a number on your car, by the way. I did not know such anger could be encased. And, what I can, mean, what can you luckily say? it wasn't your wife's car you were driving that day. What can dude? you say, man? They're, they're socialists. They're, they're animals. I Yeah, I mean... Anyway. That was um, unprecedented. Nell... Then brought us at one point into the Diamond Age. Oh, how did she get us to the Diamond Age? Because that's the that's, that's how the that character's started. name. Is oh, Nell. oh Nell I was like, is, don't remind me. Why do I have a poor taste in my mouth? And it's not Badusi Seltzer. No, it's not. It's no. just slightly Badusi. But um, Nell is Bud's daughter in the Diamond Age. Oh. I don't know if I even want to do listener, this. Listener, have you, I don't have you know, been keeping man. up with the Diamond I, Age? I feel like, I feel like maybe I should just, maybe I should just finish it and then do this. I don't it's, know. It's, it's fucking boring. It's boring, right? It's tough. Well, it's tough. It started out so good. And I felt you know, like, you know, you got Bud ripping around this, this, fucking dystopian future on basically rocket skates going to get his skull gun fixed Mm -hmm. um and then target like like some cool tech stuff some cool world building between like the courts and who um what tribes you do and do not mess with that you know you can't just screw with this random indian guy on the street because he might be connected and that's only a a dipshit like bud's gonna end up in a fix like that yeah and Um, then it it just jumps into steampunk hell it's not steampunk it is steampunk it's not neo-victorian is steampunk no thank you oh yes it is neo-victorian is is steampunk yes you know what neo-victorian is what fucking neo-victorian that's what it is and that does not mean it has to meet steampunk who do you trust the the google gods (laughs) I mean, what? what that I whole trust, you know, I trust all that my stuff. Own, yeah, no, no, I trust I my own knowledge know, of what, you know what, what is and what is not. I read some of the same punk. stuff you googled about Solaris, and it sounded beautiful rolling off your tongue. Yeah. But the Google gods will tell you about what steampunk is. I googled steampunk. What did that? What did that say? Uh, a world with steam. So, uh, what, <laughs> no, literally. So I'm like, yeah. oh wait, that's it. So like. Like futures, but are are steam dependent. Mm-hmm. Typically neo Victorian, and then you lose the steam part. You don't actually need steam engines to then qualify as steampunk. So you are, I mean, you are you could postulating. Look it up, except we have I'm, a not, no, I'm not looking this it up. Is not postulating. You're postulating that simply the presence of Victorian elements in the future make you steampunk. Is that make what you're saying? It steampunk make. Yeah, I'm sorry. I personified a book. <laughs> yeah, no, because you're already pissed. Yeah. You're like, oh, make I'm not you pissed. steampunk. I'm not pissed. First of all, I don't know why I'm angry right now. You don't. You I don't. You don't because like, I have no personal connection to steampunk whatsoever. I actually no. I, it does. I, you said once. You like. You know what? How do we make Superman better? Steampunk. I think it's offended your, your nerve rage. Oh, no, that's not. Uh, have no. they steampunk Superman? I said. I said that. Have that they steampunk Superman? I'm sure someone has. But <laughs> but no, I don't. I do not like. 
I do not like how how um, widespread steampunk has become, or that it's like oh, oh let's no no no. You mean you don't like a guy with a typewriter strapped to his <laughs> chest? <laughs> So creative. Right. So creative, man. With a, with a wax so mustache creative. on a fucking Unicron bicycle. You know what you, you gotta do? You gotta go to, like, Comic-Con and see the, the steampunk booths that they have. Oh, yeah. The dude selling, like, um, steampunk versions of iWatches. Yeah. 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 No. So it's basically yeah. like a... Um, I bet there's a great steampunk wedding to It's like a wedding to go to. 1920s monitor that has a crank on it. <laughs> And then a chain that goes down to your pie. It's so good. No, no, no. I don't like when somebody, when an artist or somebody takes something and then goes, I'm just going to steampunk this fucker up a little bit. So let's see what uh, R2-D2 looks like. It's fucking steampunk. And you mean like a visual artist. So yeah. Like, uh, okay. yeah. yeah. This is a steampunk book. I don't care what you think about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right. It doesn't matter. All right. You can be wrong. Um, I uh, did not like... Snow crash so much, and I'm not enjoying Diamond Age, and I'm coming to this place where maybe it's okay to not like a book you start. I don't know where I got the idea that you should just finish books. I have not finished one book in the last couple of years, and um, I kind of want to read other things. It goes back it's to still our, kind of a haul. There's still like slow burn. 350 pages left in this puppy Idea, for me. Because it, like, uh, we were talking earlier in the week and and uh, the idea that maybe this is just going to open up and become awesome. Into which you crush that and saying, I've read about people, the reviews, and people say it never opens no, up. Some people, some people said they were waiting for it to open up. Um, the thing is... Is it unfair for to expect a reader to wait until something opens up? Like, like shouldn't this thing have me by now? What would shouldn't Tarkovsky this thing do? Have me? Oh, he'd probably <laughs> film flies fucking for two and a half hours, <laughs> and then tack some oh, yeah. some doe-eyed, optimistic tale about uh, love and betrayal. Yeah, to it. it's it's overkill. Wow. He has a lot of tech. He built a big tech world. Uh, nanotech. That's it, It's um, billed as his, like, because it's when nanotech was first starting to enter, like, the technological scene. Mm-hmm. And it's billed as his, like, exploration of what nanotech can become, which, um, apparently it's it becomes a Jane Austen fucking novel. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's no. all right, though, George. You learned. Yeah. Well, how's Andre Robleff coming along? I don't know who that is. Don't worry about Sorry him. Don't worry about my... him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that wait? That's a movie, right? Yeah. Not an artist, or yeah. it's a three-hour. You, you would like that. It's about an artist. I don't know if I'd like it. I bet you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm I'm willing to. Busy daddies do Russian film. Oh God. Yeah. This. I mean, I mean that's just that. That's uh, the thing. How have we not embraced that? Vic yet? wants more sexy, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Russian is sexy. Totally. Eighties Russian, like not eighties, like like Firefox, Clint Eastwood. So sexy. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're well, changing. New we're, theme song. We're yeah. scraping okay. this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Sci-fi is over, guys. All right, we're doing nothing but Russian. We're not not literature, right? We're doing Russian films only. I mean, it's hard. Busy Daddy I do. Soviet era Russian movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah All right. man. I'll call Vic. We need a new theme song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope it starts with like, do, 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 do. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, I feel like that's the intro to every Russian place setting. It's always just like this, like, you see the skyline of Moscow and all of a sudden it's like, do, 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 do. No, from what? Like, from what, what's your database? I don't even. Know. I can't even imagine Air that. Force One. I don't know. is that a movie? Oh, Kevin. Yes. Oh, the, you mean the movie Air Force One has a shot of Rush, Moscow, and then there's a. What's the song you're singing? Do do. <laughs> no, let me warm up the pipes. <laughs> do 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 do. No, I don't get it. It's just four notes on a keyboard. Really, that's it. And then you do that over and over it's again. Like, hey, it's we got to be raining. Need, yeah, it's got to be raining too. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because no. it always rains. Listener, Russian if you names. can um, tweet what the hell George is talking about. Don't tweet. Or a leak. Nobody, don't nobody, tweet. Nobody tweets Except anymore. please follow our Twitter No, no, no. Account. No, 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 no. Fuck we don't Twitter have a Twitter account. We have a Twitter account. We have a 
we, we, we look, social media budget is way down. I know all of it's free, but, but can... it doesn't matter. Okay, that monkey that we had on that typewriter. Okay, he wants that typewriter to go steampunk now. Yeah, <laughs> right? look, what, look what steampunk has done for him. Fucking steampunk! Mm-hmm. That cigarette holder he has. So made are of we? Are we crazy, listener? Is this book just not worth sticking uh, sticking around for? Um, because I'm this close to bailing on it. I've been listening to an audio book. I've been listening to Stranger in a Strange Land. It never made the rounds. Um, when I was younger, I'm loving the hell out of that, and I think that would be more worthy of more of my attention. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the church that you were raised in, they weren't going to let a book like that in anyways, right? Uh, which one? I went through a sporadic... I went through like a series The one of, where no grokking was allowed. Or you were, your parents were Moonies, right? They were Moonies, yeah. Yeah, so uh-huh. they probably grokked a lot. They grokked everything. Yeah. That was what you had to. You, you, grok, had, to, you had to come this. in pre grok They grok you. Yeah. Pre- grok, grok you. yourself. Go grok yourself <laughs> yeah. in an Italian accent. Is that not... Is Stranger in a Strange... I, I read it. My dad would just hand me books, mm-hmm. and that was a, that went in the brain as a young person. And I couldn't give you a plot line right now, but is it not a Jesus-y thing? Like that black and white movie you were describing a couple episodes back? That's good, the black and white movie. Um, I mean, we shouldn't use names. They all kind of blur together for people. Oh, especially, yeah, because there's no color. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Oh, You're like, right. it just keeps running on to one another, yeah. Right. Have, yeah. have you, I mean, do, are you serious? Like, do you, do you ignore cinema that just because it's in black and white? I don't know, George. You ever have seen you Man that Shot Liberty, Liberty Valance? No. Why not, Kevin? What is that? Just a That's couple a guys smoking movie. cigarettes saying, Hey, copper. Jimmy. Hey, copper. You never get me, copper. Is that what that is? Jimmy Stewart those and John are, right? Wayne. You ever see Stagecoach? Some of the most no. amazing stunts no. in the, the no. world in that no, movie. No. All right. What about what they... I've seen a black and white movie. What's that Jim Jarmusch one? Down by Law? Oh, there's a flick. I don't know much about Jim Don't Jarmusch. Don't talk about it. No. Don't talk about it. No, Did no he do, should. um... Uh, I mean, he I He did saw, that vampire one I wanted to see. I saw, what's it, uh, Ghost Dog. Um, that was pretty cool. Is that Johnny Depp? No. That that's was, another um, Jim Bar- That's Jarmusch. another Jim Jarmusch. What is that? That's, um... Bleh. Ghost Prairie Dog. Yeah, Ghost it's Prairie a, Dog. It's a western. Ghost, uh, Dal- 101 Ghost Dalmatians. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> did Jim Jarmusch do Coffee and Cigarettes? I think. That's in black and white. That's not really a movie. That's more of just more like a bunch of vignettes yeah. and everything. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. What about um, Man Bites Dog? Never saw it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. what about Pie? Pie? Yeah, totally black and white. <laughs> yeah, confirm. I mean, yeah, <laughs> confirm, it? guys. Black and white yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Psycho? No, I don't even know what that is. Is that a remake? Yeah. They did remake it. Did you ever see that one? No. That's in color. That might be more your speed. Yeah. Huh? Vince Vaughn. No, totally. I don't watch that stuff. Vince totally Vaughn. fucks up. Terrible, really? man. Where are Fucking we? Fucking terrible. Where, where Dude, are Dude, Gus we, Van Sant. Hold on. Gus Van Sant did a shot-by-shot remake of Psycho. What about Elephant? Never saw Gus it. Gus Van Sant? No. 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 Never What happened. about Das Elephant? Das Elephant? <laughs> what, so wait, Lu- Gus, he's, Lu- made, Lu- he's made a Psycho that's never been out? No, 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 it came out in, uh, like, 1999. Oh, and that's Vince Vaughn, so that's the remake. It's Vince Vaughn and Haish, and uh, it's a shot-for-shot remake, and it's fucking horrible. Which goes to tell you... Yeah, see, I, we can't even talk about remakes anymore. Let's talk about new stuff. Excuse me. Diamond Age. No, no, ah. not new. No, no, not new. Not it wasn't new. new. Um, how about short film? Never happened. It's like this is on deck. It's like this How is cool. on deck. It's we like watched a short about. film, folks. We watched a short film that premiered at uh, Tribeca and the uh, Telluride Film Festival. Um, it's called Never Happened. It's like nine minutes long. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I liked it. Was it was much better than Cats. It was, I will uh, go see it again I and never again. saw Cats either. Is that in black and white? If it... If, you, if, if you're it happened blind. before 1950, yeah. yeah, that's good. There goes that 1950. audience. Yeah, there goes that good. audience. There goes the oh yeah. no, not the fucking right. cat loving yeah. Broadway heads. No, I mean the colorblind. Oh, 
He went right for them, George. Fuck. You know, I'm partially colorblind, too. So You would so say that. I can't. Oh, yeah, no, just help a guy out. Just, oh, you mean so you're allowed to say it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're going to play that. All right. <laughs> I'm Italian, too, so I can say, you know, guinea. And wop? Sure. <laughs> Hey! Whoa. Hey! Whoa! 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. There, stack. I don't know what what hey, Puritan I'm Polish, family. Man. Oh I, Jesus! So wait, you're the son of Italian Moonies. <laughs> That's what my legal name is, son of Italian <laughs> Moonies. <Mooney. laughs> That's what that means. Yeah. <laughs> you got a got a grok, got a grok yeah, Italian yeah, Moonies. Yeah. I love that word grok. I I I would slip it into. Wouldn't casual you? language, <laughs> wouldn't you? But I don't. I would then want to explain like, oh, it's from Stranger in a Strange Land. I just like, and then yeah, and then because then, then there'll be no slipping man. it in for nothing. Yeah, You're right. like they just turn and walk <laughs> right. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that that ship is sailed. I have a wife and two kids. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I grok that. Doesn't have to. Not everything, Kevin. Would that mean fuck that? No. What does Grok yeah. mean? Is Grok like a, kind of like Smurf? Grok is from Stranger in the Strange Land. Right, but is it like Smurf? No, it's like understand to the fullest extent. I thought it was the fuck. No, Grok. Fucking A. Grok and A. Yeah. I thought it was their sex act. No, man. It's, I want, it's, it's Did too, I tell you I don't remember under, any of this book, It's right? to accept to your innermost self. You but grok like something, you grok something, you, you grok like something, the then, bear, like, then you cherish it, then no, because the understanding, bit. the twist is is a bit that, like, he is not uncivilized, we are uncivilized. He is, uh... But he's in there he's a cult, extremely, is there a Jesus Christ thing? He's, he's a fucking Martian, dude. But he starts a cult. Well, I'm, I don't know, maybe. Oh, you don't know yet? No, I'm not, I'm... Oh, what page are you on? I don't know. Oh, because what percent? To what it. percent are you on, listener? If you're having this trouble with your friends when they only know what percentage they're on in their book, because because uh, it's on they've a lost all touch with audio reality. device. Well, on their audio, on their steam, well, it's on a on phone their steam or, pad. Is that your steam pad you're using? Steam pad. Yeah. I ran out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it wouldn't be gas. Honey, I'm gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking water. Yeah. No, you forgot to put coal <laughs> in the furnace. <laughs> Which runs your steamy pad? Fucking <laughs> <a> steam pad. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid, man. I don't it's know. So, I think, it's just, I'm starting to like steampunk. I'm coming so around silly. after you've told me about it. I'm yeah. into it because, well, the anime people. Yeah, it, it got embraced people, by by animation and and some. Design. I think they kicked it off. You just see it everywhere now. I don't. Th- I think you're like stuck in 2002 with Soderbergh. What? It's not everywhere now. I mean, it's everywhere probably, in my world. You mean because at Comic Con? Yeah. Where else? Are, where else is it? Oh, uh, my dream, my nightmare. <laughs> every time I close my eyes, what a wide awake I see nightmare. Fucking, every time I close my eyes, I see my kid all steampunked out. Like, look, Dad, my scooter's steampunked now. Uh, top hats, white top hats, and. Like these these glasses that have like the jeweler lenses that are endlessly swappable. You know what I'm talking about? Like five lenses flare out so they should go. Yeah. For some reason that is steampunk. Having it's a monocle. It's well, that okay. So that with Neil Stevenson, dude. Like so then there's this whole neo Victorian pap with it's like so there's no grace to it. It reminds me of. Victorian literature, yeah. which obviously no. the dude is smart. That's going on, but it's just, it's just boring. Shitty. It's boring, it's is what it is. Man. and they're going to have a ladies' primer what because the, the social fuck? system is uh, the women can't uh, you know climb up, so we need to steal a book to make it out. Yeah, whatever, like man. is that is that know. just supposed to be funny that his name is Finkel McGraw? Like is that? Just... I don't know. You tell me. You think that guy's funny? I thought Snow Crash was funny. I thought it was a funny. Oh, wait, I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Like you giggled? No, I didn't like laugh out. I thought it was charming. So the last time, last time I giggled, uh, it was wasn't reading... like Douglas Adams funny or, or like that. It wasn't like oh my gosh, that's that's both intelligent, um, observational, and funny at the same time. It's like oh, that's clever. He's clever, and that might well, that's, be almost see, like I, an I, you know, I, I, don't, I I go on record as being the the guy who, who doesn't like the funny stuff as much mm-hmm. um, 
but Kevin doesn't like to laugh. William Gibson in Virtual Light, the first of the Bridge trilogy. There are two guys that are security dudes, and one's an ex-cop who's uh, had to shoot someone uh, and got fired from the force. Was questionable. He was he was saving someone's life, but uh, who was security guard? And his his partner is is in a, from a, a religious television cult family, and he has uh, steel marble eyes, like chrome eyes, nice. from watching, and they 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 feel the spirit from watching movies over and over and over again. They talk about movies, uh, but he's defected from that cult, but he grew up that way. Uh, and the guy's kind of a shut-in, and he's highly allergic to everything. So he's, like, wiping off this stuff, and so they get <laughs> they get a call to a house where there's a... There, where a rich family, they're protecting the elite, has a break-in, okay? And it's the worst call they've had. They're the two dudes on the scene. The same go check the property out. This is a full emergency. People being held captive. So it's a gated community. They run through the gate. They smash through the gate. They run into the house accidentally. Uh, <laughs> and then the choppers come and everything and they've been hacked. Their system's been hacked by someone who paid some hackers to expose her his wife's affair. So all they find is this woman tied up in like her nursery. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lover flees and the guys the real cops come in and say what the fuck have you done to this house they think that the security dudes are the uh, the uh, the perpetrators and one dude the dude is highly allergic is like just swollen (laughs) (laughs) on the ground like freeze motherfucker and the cop says to the other dude who's been arrested he's like what's wrong with him he's like highly allergic and he's just like puffed up and it's just this thing that, that William Gibson had set up by just kind of a couple allergy mentions and and it was, <laughs> and it was funny it was like, man yeah, it was that's, funny that's good man that's good and yeah. it built and all of a sudden you kind of got like a payoff yeah. from knowing this character but you never like why I just you just think he's just kind of talking about him but he kind of mm-hmm. Anyways, I hope you're still there, listener. I know that and was diffuses, a riveting. No, that's brilliant, rendition. man. That's brilliant, and it, and it and it adds to like what could otherwise be a generic sort of tense situation by going like, here's a little bit of humor, you know. I hear here, you guys worked a bit. Here's a payoff. Well, and, and, and it's so, contrary to what's uh, what has been going on in, in Neil Stevenson books so far, because um, a lot of it is uh, just jokey. Um, I remember um, there's a point where their Bud is being prosecuted, and they're rattling off all of the now archaic ways that life used to end, and it's things like um, running with scissors, and you know the, the things that we are now over, and it's those types of jokes that that are like literally like it's like mm-hmm. you know we you know uh, you are now. Um, you're now free from the types of ailments which used to end people's lives, such as cancer and serious stuff. And then it gets into like the running with scissors. And it's this like, it's just kind of, it's a joke and it's quick and it's disposable. And then it's gone. I mean, at the risk of losing the nerd audience, I think nerds are enjoying this stuff. Clearly. Colorblind, well, yeah. colorblind nerds. But, you know, it's, it, with it's, monocles. Su- it's subjective. I mean, that's I the fucking thing. It's like, a well, million people a, a, a million people loved the fact that Solaris is two hours and 47, it's 47 minutes long and cherish every minus minute. Minus one. I'm looking at him right now. Cherish every minute of that two hours and 47 minutes. Cherish. You know? Grok it. Completely. Grok, grok the fuck yeah. out of it. Yeah. And that's cool. Um, I think... Uh, and that's... I mean, I think the to... cusp of what we do here is we don't poo-poo other people's opinions of this shit we would never no. do that um we've made enemies we've, accidentally we've i don't made know enemies ac- accidentally accidentally you know, i just On think I, we just we just kind of th- it, this didn't work for me it's not working for me right now which is a strange uh, phenomenon i think i should like everything uh, i kind of do too sometimes he goes into so. like in snow crash i had trouble with hero protagonist getting all this information downloaded to him about the Sumerian stuff and the coding and stuff and uh, 
he goes into that again. He, he starts to get really in-depth, and he goes back into some of these similar myth, uh, kind of creation mythy, trickster elements of archetype stuff, and that, I felt, was disingenuous. I was like, well, here you are again, man. And, and maybe there's people who, like, enjoy that coming back up. Well, the thing that Snow Crash... Um, and we agreed on this big time. It's got two points that kind of hinge the story on this guy hero protagonist being given a fuck ton of information about the mythology that this whole world is built on and then being able to understand it, to grok it, and deliver that information to multiple other people who then also understand it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's flat out unbelievable. Like it's just it's just flat out like you at no point are you given the idea that this guy is in any way this um this intelligent or even cares to be this articulate about these these subjects. So um, it sounds like instead of a character speaking, it sounds like the author speaking. And that's where he comes. And that's it's so what much with like him. that yeah. that it it. It sounds like him talking to me again. That's a, He's that's like, it. now I, I got to take yeah, a break, yeah. and I got to tell you a little bit of this background so you get the next part yeah. of this thing. I think that's I think that's kind of just nailed like what my you big problem did. with him is is yeah. that it's fucking Neil Stevenson speaking to us and not speaking to us through characters. And whereas in, in Gibson, so that hacking incident, like within the first thirty pages of a trilogy, those hackers uh, come back and build and you realize that there's so much more going on and and what seems like guys who are out just to cause trouble are actually uh, kind of a game changing force in culture itself mm -hmm. um, which is uh, well, well, which is why I have a theory that's where we go there are those who read William Gibson and then there's those who can't enjoy the rest of the world anymore but uh no, I'm kidding. Wow. Uh, I, I put, I'm going to run out. I'm going mean, to run I mean, out. That dude better write some stuff. It's like, it's like you know, it, it, basically what we're saying is if you're reading Neil Stevenson right now, stop and read William Gibson instead, I guess. I've got to, I've got to delve be. more in because, I mean, only, all I read was Pooh Country. It, almost, it just sounded like you said Pooh Country. <laughs> oh, I did. I fucking did. Pooh, Pooh country. country. Yeah, well, we, we are busy daddies, man. Never happened. Fun we didn't ride. even talk about that. We didn't. We, we we talked about never happened for a minute. It's happening right now. It is. Never happened. Nine minute flick. George listed some places it's won awards at. By memory, by the way, that's not up on the screen. He would never do that. No, no, no. Directed by Mark Slutsky. No shit. Yeah, no shit. Mm-hmm. Um. It's sexy, full. It's sexy. It's got a lot of sex. For nine minutes. Nine minutes. How do we do this? So you uh, you can look at it for free on the internet. Sure. Just mm -hmm. go and fucking look up. Never happened. Um, and the cool thing about the tech in, in this movie is that you're going to need it since we're about to spoil it. Yeah. It's like it takes place tomorrow, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's a, there's a tech involved that is clearly... The Wiper. In the w -I -P -R. future. W-I-P-R. And... Um, it is. Is that what the name of the the app, the app is? is? Wiper. Yeah. yeah. What would you need that app for? If well, that's not the thing. having an affair. And that's. It, you know what? At, a, at the length of nine minutes, I don't need to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was something I was thinking about today. I was like, the moment you see you got the wiper app on your fucking phone. Well, this this wiper of a history. So there's got to be something. So and the ending. Did you did you take because his wife? She lost an earring. She lost an earring. So yeah. she's doing the same fucking thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what I know. Like yeah. I and if you can piece that. together the plot of that movie from that listener, you are as smart as we think you is. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Why even go on any further? I don't that's know. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but smart. It was smart. It was smart. It was, it was smart. smart, man. For nine for a nine minute but flick, smart. it got a it got a it got a lot of things done. It was a good kind of funny cast, um, likable people, and uh, told a really quick kind of sci fi story in the Black Mirror lo fi. Yeah, right. Sci fi. And what what's the other word? They're not calling it lo fi. They're calling it low. Oh, um, not low budget. No, no, low no. Tech. No. 
Micro? No, not micro. No, budget. no. It's like literally like if that movie, if you Google that movie, uh, don't do it. Which I'm not going to do. No, we're not allowed to do that. I can hit the back button, which is kind of no, you know, different. Geez. But all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. man. All right. That you should clear your history, man. I don't know what that is. Oh my gosh. What the hell? I've never Whoa. seen that bigger than some cars I've owned. I know. Anyway. And you're a steampunker. You actually have a large train in your backyard. Well, if you... <laughs> is, that, is that how... Large yeah. train. <laughs> it's... Skipping. Hello, George. You're dirt bag. This is Tarposki. I go today to Ralph's to pick up groceries, mostly vodka and cigarettes, for myself. And I hear the podcast, you say. You talk bad about my movie Solaris, and Tarkovsky is not happy with that. I take care of your car already, but Tarkovsky has many friends, and next is you. The worst is yet to come. You better stop talking trash, you trash can, you dirt bag, or else Tarkovsky will be very, very mad. <laughs>